Oh, yeah. Uh, hello to everybody. And uh, I hope uh, since we saw last time, you are well and uh, happy. And uh, here it's all right. As I mentioned that, uh, in the previous uh, recording, you know, uh, there was a case, but now uh, that monk came negative and he's back to the monastery in a quarantine place. And since then, uh, we haven't got any new uh, case. So we are hoping <laughs> to stay like that. But I'm not sure, you know, the, uh, how long it is going to last. Uh, one way or another, we have to expose, but don't know how to expose. We are not brave enough at the moment. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, uh, weather is uh, quite overcast last few days. And uh, as I mentioned in the previous recording, uh, currently my attention is more those nests uh, of crows. Now I have three nests to look to, you know, <laughs> and one is very close, and that is the most worrying nest because it is somehow either. I have lots of theories, and uh, one of my theory is very unexperienced, first time, you know, a young, <laughs> uh, a couple making nest in a very tall, thin tree at the top, and the wind is really, really, <laughs> sometimes the almost just nest is coming out, but they are very clever. They are made very strong, and now the I can't see the other two nests that very well, but uh, the nest which is very close to the window uh, on the top of this thin tree uh, definitely got eggs. I don't know how many because the two the uh, two parents are uh, you know the taking turn to to keep warm and it is so it's very interesting and lots of thoughts and lots of uh yeah lots of thoughts you know for them at uh, one of the, my you know uh thinking is you know the, how who taught them to make that nest and <laughs> and who taught them to keep need to keep the uh, keep the eggs warm, you know? And uh, I mean, of course, uh, the scientists may talk about this biological, you know, the what you call the instinct or in whatever whatever the reason, but there is some kind of you know process going on. And also another part is, you know, for them it is very now very valuable, very precious, and they are guarding very, very, you know, strongly. And when other crows or any other birds come nearby, they will not let come and chase them and fight. So that strong sense of possessiveness and all sorts of things. So in my head, you know, at the moment, there are lots of questions and not many answers, and uh, <laughs> and also lots of you know uh, thinking. You know, for them it is very valuable. For me, you know, the the nest is just collection of twigs and they put there. And uh, I don't know how they see uh, the place what I'm, where I'm living. It's valuable, <laughs> not valuable, or anything like that. Anyway, so lots of and uh, some side questions, some side things going on. Anyway, yeah. So that is my report. <laughs> so we'll start uh, the 
start the uh, class. And once again, you know, I want to remind ourselves uh, the importance of, you know, the what you call the uh, familiarizing ourselves, our minds, thoughts, emotions uh, with the positive, with the positive, you know, the uh, attitudes, behaviors, and so forth. As His Holiness, the Lama's, you know, uh, birthday, uh, you know, the statement, he said, if you truly love me, then, you know, uh, be compassion to, uh, to, to, to the others. And I thought that's very uh, amazing, you know, the statement. And uh, he, another statement, he said, uh, uh, if you want to give me a birthday present, then you know, recite a Cherasic Mantra a thousand times a day. Uh, you know, those are the something which very skillfully leading you know, the people to towards you know, the, these positive, having these positive mental states. So, yeah, that, so that therefore, you know, the, we all know somehow, like, like, the, like the two crows, you know, they know to keep their eggs warm, uh, either uh, biological instinct or whatever. Similar to that, we all know basically, you know, having good heart, having uh, being compassionate, uh, caring to ourselves as well as to others is some kind of basic, basic, you know, the source of happiness, a source of joy to ourselves and others. So that is something, you know, we all should try to, uh, try to remind ourselves and try to live our life in that way. Okay. So our uh, reading, you know, the, we uh, finished uh, last week reading and uh, yeah, we finish first up to uh, to say, you know, that when I have accomplished the sixth perfection, may I be able to liberate all beings uh, in the six migratory uh, realms. May I manifest the six uh, super mundane cognitions. May I, uh, uh, may I touch the great enlightenment. We finish up to there. And then so... And uh, then today, uh, the verse, uh, you know, starting verse uh, saying the not born and not coming. So that coming, those two verses, uh, those two verses, uh, uh, I marked here verse 13, uh, 14, uh, 15 and 16. And, uh, you know, the uh, those two coming today's two verses are, as I briefly touched on uh, the, you know, that uh, last week, uh, you know, the uh, the topic or the subject uh, is on emptiness, on emptiness, and the relation to that. Uh, last week, what I did is, you know, uh, uh, quoting from three sources: one from a sutra, one from, you know, the uh, 400 verses by Arate and one from um, Tsongkhapa's, you know, the prayers to the Shakyamuni Buddha uh, due to teaching dependent origination. And uh, so those three verses, uh, which are so, you know, uh, 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 Tree and Peter put it in the uh, last week's, you know, what you call the uh, 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 listening text. Uh, these three verses are really something important uh, to uh, try to understand, uh, you know, uh, their meaning, their meaning. And uh, uh, His Holiness Dalai Lama, you know, quotes uh, those verses very often and similar, some other verses, not only those three verses, uh, some other verses from Nagarjuna's, you know, fundamental wisdoms and uh, some other verses. 
but the meaning, you know, the, the main meaning or the main subject is the same in, you know, all those three verses which are quote last. And I gave, uh, you know, the uh, uh, brief explanation. So the, to, to understand today's true meaning of the two verses from the, you know, the prayer uh, from Maitreya, and, uh, the last week's three verses are very crucial, are very crucial. So I will recommend you to read those three verses last week's and try to listen uh, or, you know, read some other uh, text uh, which carries similar meaning. So the, uh, the verse, today's first reading verse, uh, not born and not coming, and so this verse, now the, you know, the uh, first say like this, uh, uh, Chandakirti, Chandakirti uh, uh, entering into the middle way, Mademika Avatara, Chandakirti is uh, one of the important texts, you know, Mademika Avatara uh, uh, entering into the middle way, and uh, there's a nice uh, verse, uh, the first two, then from that verse, first two lines are quite uh, relevant in here. Today's uh, our topic. Uh, so, so the teaching of uh, selflessness, teaching of, you know, the selflessness, Dangmedine. Uh, uh, the migrators or the living beings, sentient beings, to be liberated. The one number in order, in other, in order to liberate uh, living beings or sentient beings, you know the the selflessness, the teaching of the selflessness is taught. And and it, the, the selflessness of the teaching of the selflessness is taught in a uh, uh, in a two uh, uh, you know the, the uh, two ways or the two not two ways two chada kansa yewe namni song yeah so I will I will say I will. And uh, I'll uh, uh, translate slightly differently. Uh, due to, you know, the, the teaching of the emptiness is taught, uh, in a, uh, uh, taught due to um, this. Uh, okay, no, not in that way. So the first line, So the teaching of the uh, teaching of the selflessness is taught in order to liberate migratory beings, uh, it is taught based on uh, the phenomena and the persons. It is taught you know, in the base, on the base on the base on uh, the phenomena and the person or the self. So the selflessness of the person and the selflessness of the phenomena is uh, explained. So that is what these two lines. And today's uh, that, uh, you know, the, first of all, the first line is important to bear in our mind. Why Buddha taught? Why Buddha taught emptiness or the selflessness? So sometimes these two have a slightly different meanings uh, when we say selflessness or emptiness. Sometimes, you know, particularly from the Madhyamika Pasangika's point of view, these two have the same meaning, slightly different way of, uh, uh, way of expressing the, the, using the different expression uh, terms or different terms. But in according to the uh, Madhyamika's, uh, what you call the Swatintika, then when you say the selflessness and the emptiness may have a slightly different meaning. So uh, we will not go in that, what the device, the device, what, why there's difference. So, so the, you know, why selflessness is taught 
and it is clearly mentioned in the uh, you know the Chandakit is that first line. It is taught for the uh, living beings to be liberated from an enlightened state, although that that is not said. You know, the unenlightened state is not said, but that is what, and that is really important. As uh, his uh, recently, His Holiness Dalai Lama taught, you know, the to group of Taiwanese uh, students just before day before his, you know, uh, his uh, birthday, and he taught this uh, uh, the eight verses of my training by Geshe Lamri Tarva. And that first verse in Tibetan, first verse in the first line, the first word is dak. Dan simjen tamje la, that dak, dak, which is referring to I or the self. In this case, the I or the self, which does exist. You know, when we talk about selflessness, that self or the I, which does not exist. So we have to differentiate that those two. And uh, when he, uh, as soon as that word in Tibetan, in Tibetan that, that words come in the first line, then he explained, you know, the importance of understanding of emptiness and so on and so forth. And it, you know, relevant to hear what he said is, you know, the, the teaching of emptiness is just, it's, it's not just, you know, the, uh, intellectual, philosophical uh, enhancement. It is not like that. It is really to relevant to uh, to us, you know, to uh, be free from those afflictions which cause difficulty to us. Not just you know the uh, once again, uh, uh, not just only once, but constantly and continuously. And that's what here we need to remember, you know, that when we are reading the, these two verses and the last week's those three verses quoted from the different texts, need to bear in mind, you know, that talking about contemplation, uh, reflection, analysis on this topic on emptiness, selflessness is really for that purpose, not just mere intellectual enhancement. Mm -hmm. So the uh, so then why uh, it is selflessness or the emptiness is explained relation to the phenomena and relation to the self or the I. And it is uh, for the you know the uh, the main reason is you know the our misunderstanding our misunderstanding, uh, you know, the uh, mis, uh, mis, uh, misinterpretation, wrong view, they all uh, arise, they all occur relation to either I, self, or you know, the, uh, something other than I or the self, which start from the body to all the way up to the universe. And that is for that reason. That is, that's the main reason. You know, for the practitioner, for the, for the uh, serious, you know, the uh, liberation seeker, if, you, if, if one need to summarize, if we need to bring into more, you know, what you call the, uh, Easy to easy to uh, do the analysis. Then break you know in uh, break down into those two. First, how I get, how I misunderstand, how how is my misunderstanding relation to the my identity, the self or the I? Then how uh, how I misunderstood reality or the nature of the you know the other than the self or the I, like the body, feelings, thoughts, beliefs, and so on and so forth. So that is what I and my, sometimes uh, trust uh, in, in Tibetan, ngadang ngayua, ngadang 
Nga means I or the self. Ngaiwa is mine. So, you know, the, when we talk about phenomena, it is not just talking about a phenomena normally what not related to that, you know, things that we, we are not, uh, we, uh, not uh, things that were, did things which are not related to us. We may have that feeling when we say phenomena. That's not the case. When you talk about here the selflessness of a person or the yeah, selflessness of the phenomena or self-grasping of the person or the self-grasping of the phenomenon, phenomena relate, uh, is mainly referring to uh, starting from very close to here, our body, feelings, thoughts, like in the Buddhist term, the five aggregates. Those five aggregates are the, you know, the something that we uh, we uh, we don't understand their nature as they are, and uh, we have misunderstanding of their nature, you know, the misperception of their nature, and that those mis misperception or misunderstanding then creates the uh, attachment or aversion. And then, you know, snowballs, rolls. That's how. So, uh, okay. Th th that's something useful to, uh, to bear in mind why emptiness is taught in, uh, in, that, uh, in, in that fashion, in the fashion of really self saying the emptiness of the person or, and the emptiness of the phenomena because our misunderstanding, misperceptions are you know, occurred or arise in relation to the I and the mind. And the mind refers to the phenomena. You know, I and the mind, self, uh, the madam, mayua. Mm -hmm. So this first, uh, today's first reading, and the first verse reading that he is saying, no, uh, not born and not coming, not uh, self, nature, non-existent. So in, in Tibetan, in Tibetan, Madhye Patam Minjungdam, Rangshin Machi, Ne Machi, Namri Machi, Ngo Machi, Dongbe Chen Dokpa So there are lots of uh, what negative, you know, the terms. And as in English, not born, not coming, you know, the non-existent, not abiding, existent, non, uh, abiding, non-existent. So the Madhyapa, um, you know, this is referring to, in certain extents, like this, uh, this commentary that I'm reading, Madhyapa, mm -hmm. the, you know, the relation to the three times, past, present, and the future. Those past, you know, the objects or the things which are already past, they all, you know, they, they come into being, come into existence, they're already gone. They, they come into existence, uh, you know, is not, um, uh, when it says not born, not born in the sense intrinsically, in and of themselves, you know. And then the same meaning, not, uh, not coming, the future, the things which are going to come in the, in the future, future in the sense next minute, next hour, next you know day, next decade, next year, you know, and so forth. They they are going to come into existence, but not going to come into existence in and of themselves. Not going to come into existence, you know, independently, uh, and that's what here. Uh, not coming. And uh, the uh, self, uh, nature, non-existent, the, the present things, present in the sense, although things are constantly changing, things are constantly moving, not static. All are, you know, the nature, uh, particularly in permanent things. But we need to look at past, present, and the future. So the present things, you know, which are here, right here and now, they are, they exist in, 
is also not in and of themselves. Their existence at the as a present is also dependent on many other things, not in our, not in a, in and of themselves, how they exist, they exist in, when it's self nature non existence. And uh, abiding uh, you know the neba majepa minjungwa rangshi machi ne machi neba so abiding in the sense when we talk about you know coming going abiding and also uh, what's called the disappearing or distracting dis 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 uh, not distracting dis destroying they are all you know in the in a in a process or in the nature of uh, you know uh, uh, dependent on the other things dependent due to the other factors due to the other uh, uh, other factors certain things abide certain things disappeared destructed and destroyed and so on and so forth and the same as the awareness of appearance you know the part in you know, our, our experiences our memories our wishes our yearning longing all those awareness you know the uh, mental states they are also same in same nature uh, do not have any uh, intrinsic inherent you know uh, independent uh, uh, existence as a uh, awareness as a experience as a memory as a wish uh, and the so called you know the number you match no match now and is the non true existence of things themselves mm? things themselves so here number you match no match no bo match wa no bo uh literally it means things you know mobile as a things you know, external things as well as internal things physical things non physical things they are also you know they are here they exist but their nature of existence their you know their manner of existence is not intrinsic not independent you know no much mm? that's one don't be trying to talk about show Uh, and here it says i wish to realize emptiness of phenomena so you know yes may i may i may i, may I realize the emptiness of phenomena so emptiness of the phenomena as i just mentioned it is although in the in the verse you know have these uh, different so say the past present and the future relation to the, our five aggregates our physical body you know the, my physical body you know the past 60 something years you know day moment by moment you know the uh, hour by hour day by day year by year it come into being and pass they all pass and they come into being and going into non existent that nature is you know not intrinsic not independent but dependent you know uh, on many factors same as my feelings uh, pleasant unpleasant neutral same as my memories same as my wishes same as my yearning longing the past and the future you know next minutes my existence of this body in the next hours my uh, my feeling going to whatever you know uh, joy or pleasure seeing the crow you know, uh, worry of may going nest going to collapse because of the storm wind so and so forth and they all come under the power of many factors and the same as my present feeling you know talking to you the feeling of joy to have this opportunity 
and to share these some very you know the important topics and so forth and wish and also the other factors. So that 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 is what here uh, we need to examine. We need to contemplate, reflect on, you know, and through that then uh, understand you know to understand their nature, their nature of you know absence or empty of inherent, empty of self, which we mentioned in one of the that verse, particularly uh, the Ayadev's 400 verse, at the end he says, if, that, if things are exist in that manner, then we, will, we can call that a self. You know, the, so that, that sort of things. So then we will have the understanding of selflessness of the phenomenon or emptiness of phenomena, whatever term that we use, emptiness or selflessness. Mm. Okay. Then the next verse, next verse uh, in, in English, uh, Buddha is like a great Lord, yet sentient beings uh, do not exist. And uh, life uh, does not exist. Uh, no being at all is there that exists. Even healing does not exist. I wish to understand the phenomena of uh, phenomena of self, no self existing ego. Mm -hmm. Okay, that is uh, how it translated. Uh, now, first I will read in Tibetan. Sanjay Tangsong Chambotar. Sanjay Tangsong Chambotar. Semjem Machi, Sok Machi, Kansam Machi, Sok Machi, Dhamma Chi Yi, Che Tok Sho, Che Tok Sho. So the Sanjay Tang Song Chambotar, Sanjay, you know, enlightened or Buddha, Tang Song Chambo, Tang Song, that we had one in a quite early. Uh, verse, uh, one of the verse, uh, uh, verse, verses say, use that term Tang Song. Here the term is used Tang Song Chambo. In other words, uh, great sage, great sage Tang Song. Uh, th this is you know, uh, the term which seems uh, commonly used Buddhist and non Buddhist uh, ancient Indian uh, spiritual traditions. Those great, you know, uh, uh, masters, those great, you know, uh, spiritual founders. Quite often, you uh, re they they are refers to uh, sage. So here, that's what's saying, you know, that Sanjay Tamsung Chambotar, that Buddha, who you know, the, who is great sage. Uh, great sage, Tangsung Chambotar. So then, like, like saying, like that, like the Buddha who is great sage. So, like, what does that mean? I, like the Buddha, have that sort of. So then, and uh, similar to saying, Semjin Machi. Uh, so, you know, the Semjin is uh, living beings or sentient beings. Semjin Machi, and here uh, translated saying, uh, do not exist. Uh, yeah, do not exist. Or, you know, earlier that Machi is translated in, uh, I think, how to write that, not born. Earlier, Machi is not, and they do not exist. It doesn't matter, but Semjin uh, Machi. What, what's happening here is talking about you know, some of these, all these terms are synonymous. Semjen, Sokcha, So, Kangsa, So, Soa. So all these are synonymous. In other words, saying sentient beings, Sokcha, living beings, Kangsa, uh, person, uh, So. Uh, so much that 
living beings. All these are, you know, in Tibetan, they all are synonyms. Different terms have a slightly different meanings. When you say semjin, literally it means saying, you know, having mind. Semjin, having mind. Uh, Sokcha, literally it means have life. You know, kangsa. Uh, that I really don't know what does that mean, but it is you know usually translated uh, uh, person kangsa. Uh, so so then, literally it means have life. But this all uh, you know in the in the sutra, in the sutra you know sometimes you know these are repeated when they when the emptiness is taught in the Panchaparamita sutra. You know, saying that uh, Kansa is emptiness, uh, Sokcha is emptiness, Semjin is emptiness, and so on and so forth. And it, that's what here, this meaning of that verse. In other words, all these living beings, you know, for example, me, yes, I'm sentient beings. Yes, I'm a living being. Yes, I'm person. Yes, I'm having a mind. So... This all are referring to me. If that applied to you, that's also, in, unless you are not living being, then I don't know. <laughs> Otherwise, so what he's saying is, all these, you know, either we use person or sentient or you know the living living being, you know, all nature of their existence is not in and of themselves. You know, nature of their existence is not intrinsic or inherent. And that's what here uh, in the English translation saying, yet sentient beings do not exist. That uh, Yet sentient beings do not exist, not in a literal sense. You know, it's sentient beings do not exist in and of themselves, uh, in and of itself. So that's what the, the meaning uh, so again, then here, the, uh, similar to the previous one, need to really analyze, as uh, His Holiness said that, uh, the other day when he talked about, you know, the, he... Uh, <laughs> so, you know, the, 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 uh, in the Renavali, that is the Sanskrit term, uh, precious garland, and... Uh, so uh, saying that I or the self or the person, you know, when we analyze, when we investigate, you know, uh, with, uh, on this collection of mind and body, you know, then when we analyze, it, you know, traditionally those, uh, you know, the body is, uh, you know the combination of all those, you know the five or five or six elements like water, fire, and uh, examining one by one, and uh, then you know uh, none of them can come out as a I or as a self. So that you know the, we can use some of the modern, you know the uh, or the you know, the Western way of uh, sort of, you know, the, what's here as a mind and body. And then if we analyze whether the body really stands up as an eye or the self, whether the minds, whether the memories, any of what's here uh, as an eye, you know, when we do the analysis, then none of them, you know, none of them, either the body or the mind, or within the mind, either to say the subtle mind or the gross mind or the memory, you know, none of them will stand up, uh, will, you know, uh, withstand the analysis uh, as an I, you know, they, they, and not come out of uh, as an I or the self uh, under the analysis. So that is what here, what we need, you know, the, but that is, uh, again, same time, you know, that uh, 
we shouldn't. There is a, what I've noticed in the West, and also in you know we do here too. Just simply saying, "Oh, body is not I, uh, feeling is not I." Not in that way. That that is very uh, like a you know the mimicking uh, or simply just not serious analysis. Simply just uh, copying the, what other people have said, but serious analysis. Then. At the end, you know, when we find uh, the conclusion, you know, whatever is the conclusion, you don't have to find the conclusion what these teachers have said. It sh should be serious analysis, you know. And uh, so th that is what here what we need, mm -hmm. analysis. Don't be chen, talk a short. Uh, so in um, what it says here, Dhamma Chi, Dhamma Chi, Dhamma Dhamma Chi Be, Dhamma Chi Be, Chu Tok Show. So Chu Tok Show here translated phenomena. In other words, nature. In this case, Chu Tok Show, Dhamma Chi Be, Chu Tok Show. You know, the, uh, may I, may I, may I able to. See, may I able to understand, you know, the, the selfless nature of I, or selfless, you know, reality of I, uh, relation to the self. This, this is what uh, the, when it's the last line is said. I wish to understand the phenomena uh, of the non-self existing ego. Uh, can uh, you know the, the can say like this? May I, may I, may I realize, may I realize the, you know, the nature of selflessness of the person or selflessness of, you know, that nature that, that uh, in Tibetan chö is refers to here. So Tibetan word chö has many different meanings. The meaning changes within the context. You know, sometimes, yeah, just phenomena. When earlier we said chö da kansa you know, the phenomena in a person. That is exactly the phenomenon. But sometimes chö, dharma, you know, that uh, sanjay chö, gindun, that, that second chö is dharma, and not really phenomena as a thing uh, like that. So it has a different, changes the meaning. Dharma chö, yi chö, dok shong. Okay, leave it here. <laughs> and... Uh, so the, I don't know what to say at the end of the two, uh, end of the uh, you know, two verses explanation on emptiness, then it is emptiness. <laughs> okay, okay. So, you know, look after yourself, be happy, whether, whether it's good or not in the UK, I don't know. Uh, today I haven't I haven't looked at the BBC weather. Usually I, I I follow the weather once a day. What's happening in the UK? And <laughs> today I haven't managed to do that. And uh, so yeah, be happy and take care. And see you next time. Oh yeah. Podal hai ne jone tamie jangu ne jone ba me je u la je tu sun san je. ตมาคุเจชิสุสุสาธานิเจเวชัพเยเปมอลาเตเตปุมปะคุมาเตเตตมายุมลาจังเซโลอมเจเจมาพะมาตมาลาจังเซโลจังเซตมายุมาปาราม
ยีเกเดตาโชตานังกาปังจิเตนตุโบชะเกเนเดตะปะเมปะปะชาเซเกจิเมลาซานปะตุงมะนะโซมะจูเจจองโบรอนะเตซะนะมันตานิจิสุเ